At the deepest point on Earth, sunlight has never existed. No warmth, no sound as we know it. The pressure is so crushing it can collapse steel like paper. No human body has ever been there unprotected. And yet, something survives. Nearly 11 kilometers beneath the surface lies a realm so hostile that science can only enter for minutes at a time, sending machines into a place they were never meant to endure. What comes back isn't clarity, it's fragments, glitches, data that raises more questions than it answers. What scientists have recorded at these depths isn't horrifying because of legends or sea monsters, it's horrifying because reality itself begins to break down. Where physics bends, biology defines expectations, and even our best technology struggles to return intact. The deepest known point in Earth's oceans is the Challenger Deep, located in the Mariana Trench in the western Pacific Ocean. Its depth is measured at approximately 10,900 to 11,000 meters, depending on location and measurement technique. At this depth, the pressure exceeds 1,100 times atmospheric pressure at sea level. This means more than 16,000 pounds per square inch pressing against everything that exists there. To put that into perspective, this pressure is strong enough to crush steel, collapse submarines, and instantly destroy most human-made equipment. Only specially designed deep-sea submersibles made of thick titanium or pressure-resistant ceramics can survive for short periods of time. The Hadal Zone begins at about 6,000 meters below sea level and extends all the way to the bottom of the deepest trenches. The name comes from Hades, the Greek underworld, because for decades scientists believed nothing could live there. The absence of light, near freezing temperatures, extreme pressure and lack of nutrients made life seem impossible. That assumption turned out to be wrong. In 1960, the Bathyscaphe Trieste made history by carrying Jack Picard and Don Walsh to the Challenger Deep. During their descent, they observed what appeared to be a flatfish-like organism moving along the seafloor. While later studies suggested this specific observation may have been misinterpreted, the dive proved something critical. The ocean floor at extreme depth was not sterile. Subsequent missions using unmanned probes provided clearer evidence. In 1995, the Japanese Kaiko submersible collected sediment samples from the Challenger Deep. These samples contained microorganisms thriving under pressures once thought unsurvivable. Later research confirmed that life at these depths is dominated by microbes, crustaceans, and highly specialized invertebrates. One of the most remarkable discoveries was xenophyophores. These are giant single-celled organisms that can grow several inches across. They live on the seafloor and build complex structures from sediment and materials. Xenophyophores challenge traditional definitions of complexity because they are not multicellular, yet they form large and structured bodies. Deep-sea gigantism has also been observed. Certain amphipods and sea cucumbers found at extreme depths are significantly larger than their shallow water relatives. Scientists believe this may be related to cold temperature, slowing metabolism, reduced predation, and evolutionary adaptations to scarce food availability. Food in the Hadal zones does not come from sunlight. It arrives as marine snow, which is a slow drift of organic particles from the upper ocean or from chemical processes near hydrothermal systems. This means every organism exists in a state of extreme energy conservation. Growth is slow, movement is minimal, survival is precise. Fish do not exist near the lower limits of the Hadal zone. The deepest confirmed fish species is the Mariana snailfish observed at depths of around 8,100 meters. Beyond this depth, the pressure interferes with biological molecules essential for complex vertebrate life. This is not speculation, but biochemistry. Proteins and cell membranes lose structural stability beyond certain pressure thresholds. To counteract pressure, deep-sea organisms produce 
trimethylamine N-oxide, known as TMAO. This compound stabilizes proteins and prevents them from deforming under extreme pressure. However, TMAO becomes ineffective beyond certain depths, which explains why bony fish cannot survive deeper than their observed limits. Despite this, the deep ocean is not quiet. Hydrophones placed across the ocean floor have recorded a wide range of low-frequency sounds. One of the most famous was the bloop, detected in 1997. At first, it was unidentified and sparked speculation. Later, analysis showed it was caused by ice quakes, which are massive ice fractures in Antarctica. This is an example of how unfamiliar natural processes can appear, disturbing until fully understood. Other deep sea sounds include whale vocalizations, tectonic movements, underwater landslides, and volcanic activity. The ocean floor is geologically active. The Mariana Trench exists because one tectonic plate is being forced beneath another, creating immense stress and energy release. Hydrothermal vents exist even near extreme depths. These vents release superheated water rich in minerals. Some vent systems host entire ecosystems powered by chemosynthesis rather than sunlight. In certain regions, molten sulfur lakes have been observed, such as at the Daikoku Seamount. These environments reach temperatures exceeding 180 degrees Celsius and demonstrate that extreme heat and extreme pressure can coexist on the ocean floor. Scientific instruments deployed to these depths face constant risk. Pressure can cause microfractures in sensor housings. Cold temperatures affect battery performance. Long communication delays and limited visibility complicate data collection. When equipment fails or is damaged, it's usually due to mechanical stress, sediment movement, or geological activity rather than unknown forces. The seafloor itself is unstable. Fine sediments can shift suddenly due to seismic vibrations. Submarine landslides can leave large tracks and depressions that may appear unusual without context. These are natural geological processes amplified by extreme conditions. Light does not naturally exist at these depths. Any illumination comes from submersible lights or bioluminescent organisms. Bioluminescence is common among deep sea creatures and is produced through chemical reactions. While flashes of light can appear sudden or intense on camera, they are typically caused by disturbed organisms reacting defensively to passing equipment. Temperature fluctuations can occur due to hydrothermal activity or chemical reactions in sediment. These changes are localized and brief but can register as spikes on sensors. Interpreting such data requires careful collaboration and repeated observation. So why does it sometimes appear that scientists are silent? The reality is that deep ocean research operates with limited data, high costs, and long analysis timelines. A single dive may take years of planning and millions of dollars. Instruments may only function for hours before retrieval. Any unexpected data must be verified through repeated measurements before publication. Science advances cautiously because incorrect conclusions can undermine entire fields of research. When data does not fit existing models, the response is not fear, but skepticism and verification. Silence often means ongoing analysis, not suppression. The true horror of the deepest ocean is not creatures or conspiracies, it's the realization that most of our planet exists under conditions human can barely study. The Hadal Zone represents an environment where physics dominates biology, where survival operates at the edge of possibility, and where even advanced technology struggles to function. The ocean depths remind us that Earth is still largely unexplored. More than 80% of the ocean remains unmapped in high resolution. Every expedition reveals how much we do not yet understand. That uncertainty is not something scientists fear. It's what drives exploration. The deepest place on Earth does not hide secrets because scientists are afraid to speak. It hides secrets because reaching it is difficult, dangerous and rare. What waits at 11,000 meters is not horror in the cinematic sense, 
It's the raw power of nature operating beyond human comfort. And the more we explore, the more we realize how small we truly are beneath the ocean floor.